Miss Maternova, uh, welcome to Georgia again. Uh, it's always a great pleasure to have you in, uh, in Georgia. Uh, the European Union, European Commission is a very, very uh, strong supporter of Georgia's integration and a great partner for Georgia. It's a great pleasure for, for us, uh, for the talk show world as such, to have such a distinguished guest. So welcome to Georgia. Thank you very much, uh, Madloba. Mm, thank you. Um, Ms. Maternova, what uh, is on your agenda for the, this uh, visit? I know you're frequently uh, coming to Georgia. I know uh, you are doing a lot uh, for, uh, for Georgia and uh, for Georgia's uh, reformation process and uh, Georgia's integration process in the European Union. Your uh, department, uh, your directorate is uh, doing a great job in supporting in this uh, important process for Georgia. So uh, what is, uh, what, what did bring you to, to Georgia this time? Uh, well, thank you for having me here. It's always a pleasure to address uh, people in the, in the listening audience uh, through the TV. Uh, and getting the message of the EU directly uh, to people. Well, to your question, my, the reason for my trip is threefold. Uh, the timing of it is uh, the Open Government Partnership Summit, and I would like to congratulate uh, Georgia for hosting it and for taking the leadership of this incredibly important initiative at a time when uh, uh, things we thought that were given and cast in stone are suddenly in doubt. When the trust in institutions is eroding, it's really important to have uh, uh, a gathering like this. And it's, it's very nice to see that Tbilisi is, the, is it. So that's the reason, and that's the first reason for coming, but also the timing of it. But there are two other reasons uh, why I came. One, a second is to uh, meet the new government. I had a meeting with the, uh, and colleagues with the Prime Minister yesterday as well as the new Minister of Finance and uh, we had a meeting today with the new Minister of uh, Regional Development and Infrastructure and to discuss the priorities to discuss how EU assistance can be of service and support to the reform path of uh, Georgia, how the new plan of the government meshes with what we've been doing so far and I'm very happy to say that there is very very good uh, correlation and uh, the third reason why I came is to visit Kaheti it was my first time in uh, in Kaheti uh, my colleagues all laughed because I've been obsessed about uh, seeing the Mimino airport because many 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 years ago I had seen Mimino <laughs> movie and since then I had this dream of visiting Tel Aviv and seeing the airport with the backdrop of the Caucasus mountains behind it. So I'm very happy to say the dream was fulfilled on Monday and we, we in fact had a, had a very good visit to this incredibly important uh, uh, region for Georgia whether it's the wine production, whether it's the tourism, whether it's the agricultural uh, uh, production, and met with the local authorities, with the governor and his office, uh, and uh, discussed how we can help on regional diversification and regional development for Georgia. So those are the three reasons why uh, I'm here now. Very, very important that uh, you have uh, visited the, the regions and one of uh, uh, beloved region uh, for for many uh, in Europe in uh, European Union and uh, it's really full of uh, uh, tourists uh, these days and uh, I know that uh, European uh, Union and European Commission is supporting uh, Georgia's small and medium uh, enterprises uh, to develop uh, but in a larger picture uh, it's really huge uh, support uh, provided by the European Union uh, through, the, uh, through its uh, financial institutions. Uh, EBRD has uh, 
in, in general, uh, European Union, uh, since the independence and since the cooperation started between European Union and Georgia, has provided more than 4 billion uh, euro support, and correct me uh, if I'm uh, wrong. And uh, the portfolio of, of uh, European uh, Bank for Reconstruction and Development has the more than 3 billion uh, euros, and uh, acting actual portfolio is up to 1 billion uh, right now, and about 200 projects are ongoing. Uh, so it was just concluded the, the project of rehabilitation of the highway uh, of, uh, and close to Tbilisi, to the Britannia direction. And um, what are the, what are the uh, impressions? Uh, is it working correctly? The spending uh, of European money is uh, going in the, the right direction? And is it bringing the benefits uh, to, to Georgian citizens and uh, Georgia as a state? What, what, what are your impressions? Um, well, this is a big question. And uh, I'll try to answer short, and then I'll try to expand on my answer. Please do. My short answer is yes. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying yes uh, for the correct spending is that, uh, in fact, the uh, World Bank uh, made the something called uh, Systematic Country Diagnostic uh, Report uh, some, uh, some month ago, maybe, maybe half a year ago for Georgia, and it was in fact very rewarding and gratifying to read that every single, every single issue that was identified as a challenge for the Georgian economy, for the Georgian government, and for the Georgian society, mm -hmm. every single issue was addressed through our programming, whether our bilateral programming, whether our programming through what we call regional programs. The regional programs are those that uh, address all, all six countries of the Eastern Partnership, or whether through our collaboration with, as you mentioned, the international financial institutions. And, and this was very important because also issues where, uh, for example, you mentioned uh, the, the whole area of access to credit and especially access to credit for the small guys, for the small micro enterprises yeah. that exist, is something that we feel is a problem in Georgia. And that's exactly what we discussed yesterday with the prime minister, um, that the large banks easily provide credit to large enterprises. It's the small enterprises that have a bigger problem is something that we already rolled out three or four different programs to support SMEs, microenterprises, for example, a program for microcredit in LARI, in local currency. But what we have also done is to commission uh, a broader study to develop the non-banking access to credit. Mm -hmm. You know, leasing, factoring, collateral lending, inventory lending, all the uh, type of access to finance that exists in all developed economies that is not reliant on banks because you have very strong banks, you have very good banks, but banks will always be the more conservative element, right? They, there is always a segment of enterprises that doesn't get touched or doesn't get affected uh, by, by bank lending and it's this kind of lending that we'd like to address through uh, developing alternatives to uh, bank lending that exists in any modern economy. So I would say, to come back to your question, I think that our financing is effective and I think that the demonstration of it is, uh, is the fact that we are addressing all the key weaknesses or challenges. But this is not to say that there is not uh, uh, areas to improve. The largest Which room. One? Well, the largest room in the world is room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So, what we just discussed with uh, uh, Minister of uh, Regional Development over lunch, in fact, was looking for ways to develop programs that touch 
the life of citizens directly. And this is something that we had lots of discussions in Kacheti, in fact, um, with the local action group, mm -hmm. Lagodehi, yep. is uh, where we visited the park and we met uh, uh, with, uh, with a group of really engaged and interested citizens with the local mayor and discussed how to, you know, expand and even replicate the type of programs that we have with them where relatively small amount of money can actually spur a lot of local activism, a lot of local enthusiasm, and a lot of development of local solutions, because let's be realistic, whether it's a small country like Georgia or a bigger country or even smaller country, from the central office you never can know what exactly is the problem of the local citizens. It was, you know, uh, interesting surprise for us when we asked the, someone from the governor's office who told us that stray dogs, street dogs, is a really a big problem it in is. Tel Aviv. Something that a bureaucrat in Brussels would not think. We will not consider. Right? Yes. And, and if we have an instrument to support local initiative, mobilization of local citizens, we can easily provide a tool that people can take care of something that is really important to them on a, on a local level. That's, that's a really a music, sounds like a music to my ears and being uh, in the EU integration business. Um, I'm really uh, happy that uh, uh, EU support, EU assistance uh, is not uh, uh, decreasing, it is uh, it is increasing. In 2014-2017, uh, uh, through the uh, EU uh, neighborhood, is a neighborhood uh, instrument. Uh, Georgia has received. You mentioned the sectors of of support and touching the sectors of support. It was up to 410 uh, million euros provided for Georgia in those uh, three years and. Uh, this year, uh, also, Georgia is receiving uh, about 45 million euros uh, in the macrofinance uh, assistance. What uh, should we expect in the uh, upcoming years? What kind of uh, assistance and in which uh, approximately in uh, which amounts it can uh, be uh, considered for, for Georgia in uh, nearest uh, futures and which, uh, which sector? In fact, the support that uh, we provide to Georgia from the European Union resources is very substantial. You mentioned a very large figure. Let me just say that in fact, in the year 2018, Georgia is receiving per capita by far the largest amount in the region, by far. And thanks to its reforms and, and sustained reforms over time, as President Juncker mentioned when he visited in May the 100th anniversary of the establishment of uh, Georgia, this year uh, Georgia received 40 million euro grants top up to its annual allocation out of what we call more for more envelope. Yep. So this is an envelope that is held back in our programming and is attributed on an annual basis to the best performers. And I am very happy to say that uh, Georgia has been receiving uh, this envelope for a number of years now and I very much hope that it's going to continue uh, receiving uh, this, uh, this amount. So, in fact, the, and let me just check that I have it correctly, the allocation for 2018 is 134 million euros in grants in bilateral envelope. In addition to that, uh, Georgia receives a very significant part of the regional programs. For example, all of our, all of our um, uh, EU for business, business support, credit lines in banks, etc., mm -hmm. are part of the regional allocation of our, that goes uh, through our international financial institution partners. And that's on top of uh, 
this 134 million. And on top of that is the macrofinancial assistance that you mentioned. So in fact, uh, it is really uh, shy of 200 million that uh, Georgia receives in grants uh, this year from the European Union. Sounds great, really great. And uh, it is important that uh, Georgia as a country, uh, as a state, is receiving this kind of uh, important amounts for its development, for its reforms. But it is absolutely essential that the Georgian businesses are receiving uh, uh, the loans uh, for uh, doing the projects like uh, in the energy efficiency. And uh, I know that uh, you have your very important say in this, uh, this project. This is, I think, one of the most successful uh, investments and projects. How do you evaluate this, uh, this uh, project um, and uh, what's your impression on that? Well, you just touched on two issues that are close to my, my heart. One issue is making sure that uh, small and medium-sized businesses have access to finance. And as I mentioned, we do it through our bilateral programs. For example, the microfinance in LARI that should be rolling out in the fall, I important. think is going to be important. And um, in Cajeti, we visited a wine, uh, a wine producer, a fairly substantial wine producer, and you can kill me, I'm not going to remember the name. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but it was a producer that in the season employs over 90 people and actually most of his wine goes for exports, about three quarters to Russia, the rest to the European Union. And the ability to expand the business and get new equipment to launch new production was facilitated through what we call the DCFTA facility. DCFTA is a horrible acronym. It stands for the Deep and Comprehensive Free Trade Area between Georgia and the European Union. And we uh, set up a facility uh, with EBRD and with the uh, European Investment Bank to help local businesses not only get access to money, but be able to accommodate the higher standards, right? To, to be able to adapt to the standards that the European Union has so you can, then exit, you can then export to European markets. So it was very nice to, to, to see that in reality, uh, something that we, we proposed and we supported. Now the second issue that you mentioned is energy efficiency. I call myself an energy efficiency evangelist. <laughs> and uh, I have been talking about energy efficiency to many governments, including the Georgian government and many ministers uh, on the on the way including today and yesterday and uh, I really think this is an area where the potential is not uh, really exploited in Georgia because um, there are three big consumer uh, areas consumption of energy three sectors industry transport and buildings and especially in the sector of buildings, which is the one that doesn't respond to market signals easily. Um, Georgia has a disproportionate use consumption of energy, 40% compared to the others. And this very quickly shows that there is huge uh, potential for improvement and for lowering, well, for two things, for lowering the cost of energy, hence lowering the dependence on imports from energy, which in this part of the world is very important, I think. And second, it essentially doesn't exploit the opportunity to create new professions like energy auditors, new businesses like producing energy efficient materials and new uh, jobs for people who would, in the regions, in the municipalities, across the country, uh, involve themselves 
in rehabilitating the businesses and making them energy efficient. This is not one place where some jobs are created. These are investments that are distributed and can be distributed across the, uh, the country and can support job creation, business establishment, new professions, and at the same time increase energy independence. And so we very much hope to, to nudge the authorities and the, and the businesses along this way because it has a big promise. But well, they are ready to cooperate in that direction, I hope very much. Um, I, I want to make a correction that uh, through EIB was uh, the, the funded, uh, the, the provided the loan for the rehabilitation of the, of the road uh, outside of Tbilisi after this um, uh, disaster, uh, natural disaster. Uh, EIB, uh, EBRD both are having the, uh, very large uh, portfolios and are doing, uh, doing uh, a lot. Uh, inside the country, with the country, and with the governmental institutions, with the businesses. Um, recently was made the, the uh, uh, special poll uh, for the, uh, for the uh, Georgia's EU integration uh, level. And, um, and uh, the uh, research is saying that um, Georgia is doing uh, uh, quite, European Union is popular, uh, Georgia, Georgians believe uh, in the European Union's uh, integration and its future in the uh, European Union. Um, I must honestly and frankly say that still uh, Georgians do not know enough about what is uh, uh, European uh, financial institutions, uh, European Union itself is doing. Uh, and uh, in this term, uh, the propaganda, uh, anti-EU, anti-Europe uh, propaganda is doing quite well uh, on its part. Uh, so is European Union uh, is going to, uh, is planning to support uh, the projects in the raising the awareness about the DCFTA, about the importance of the association agreement, about the whole process of Georgia's EU integration. Um, it's interesting you say that because this is a topic that uh, we discussed quite actively uh, yesterday. One I have thing, no sources in this. One, uh, one thing that the European Union is not great about is communication. I must say that, uh, I must admit that uh, openly, we wouldn't have Brexit if we communicated better. And, uh, and so I very much agree that we need to do a lot more about communicating what we do, how we do things, why we do it, and, and, and what are the benefits. And uh, yesterday we had a, meeting with the new Minister of uh, Finance and the first thing he said, the first thing when we sat down, he says, look, I come from the private sector and preparing for this meeting, it's only then when I realized how much the EU invests in Georgia. And that was, it didn't surprise me, but it was really um, another element, sort of a wake up call saying, wait, wait a second. And then also with the, in the meeting with the Prime Minister, we discussed the, really the need to invest in uh, information, awareness raising, storytelling about what are the benefits for citizens, what are the benefits for communities, what the EU stands for. And, uh, and I think you mentioned it yourself, uh, we are not operating in a neutral environment. We have your big neighbor to the north that's very actively uh, pushing its own narrative. Facts are not important in that. And I think it's really uh, upon us collectively to, to do better about saying how important 
EU is for Georgia, but also how important Georgia is for the EU. And in terms of concrete investments, we have now put together something called external investment plan, where through our international financial institutions partners, we will be putting on the table really a new product, which is de-risking of the private sector to get into the, the business. So that's a very exciting prospect for us. And we also have developed uh, and have an agreement with the Georgian government, and I will close on that, um, have an agreement with the Georgian government of uh, selecting four regions as focus regions mm. uh, for our assistance. This is not to say we will only invest in these four regions. On the contrary, but what we want to do is create linkages between our investments in these four regions. And I'm talking about uh, Guria, Racha, Imereti, and uh, Kacheti. Um, to create linkages among the various bits and investments and also build capacity in these regions for the decentralization that's uh, planned and on the way and also really focus on uh, projects that bring change to the lives of ordinary citizens. And there is no better example for them that than the stray dogs in Tel Aviv. Right. I mean, if this is an issue that really is important both for the uh, tourist sector and for their going about their own lives, then why not support that through a local initiative? I was really lucky and really happy to hear that among those four regions, one is Racha, which I'm uh, originally Excellent. from. And uh, I'm uh, more than sure, uh, than, uh, more than happy that uh, you are focusing on the on the regions uh, to develop them to decentralize the uh, um, ruling of the of the regions and uh, it's really really will be very helpful i appreciate your time i appreciate the great news which uh, you are uh, providing through our uh, talk show i uh, want to assure you that uh, in raising the awareness of uh, european union leads in Georgia, you have a great uh, partner uh, like media in Georgia Excellent. and in particular TVP Rally, our television and our talk show and business morning and uh, thank you very much for your time and for the very, very interesting interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.